So let's examine an application of an SN2 reaction that exists inside our body. So let's suppose we take a microscope and let's take any cell in our body and let's zoom in onto the nucleus of that cell. Now if we keep zooming in, we will eventually get to a DNA molecule. And let's take a small cross section of our DNA molecule. Now recall that DNA is a double helix. It's composed of two opposing but, but complementary nucleic acids running in opposite directions. And they're held together by the hydrogen bonds between our opposing nitrogenous bases. So let's look at an example of our cross-sectional area. Let's suppose our two bases are guanine and cytosine. So we have three different H bonds between these two bases. These are our sugar groups and these are our phosphate groups. Now our two nucleic acids run in opposing direction. Now let's examine these nitrogenous bases. Nitrogenous simply means we have a bunch of N atoms on our bases. Now notice the relatively electronegative, so the partially negative charge on this oxygen attracts the partially positive charge on this H on the opposing base. And this creates our hydrogen bond. The same exact thing happens here and here. For example, the lone pair of electrons here, the partially negative charge here, attracts the partially positive charge on this H atom. And the partial negative charge is created because of a difference in electronegativity between our N atom and H atom or our O atom and carbon atom. So, these bonds are very important because they stabilize the structure. They allow our two nucleic acids to stick together. If for some reason one of these H bonds or all of these H bonds are broken, our entire structure will be destabilized. And that's a bad thing because DNA in our body is very important. We use DNA to create proteins which essentially create the different types of uh, molecules that exist within our body. And it also, of course, we use it to pass down information to our kids and so if there are any issues on our DNA, that will lead to problems when we reproduce. Now, let's talk about the application of the SN2 reaction. This is known as alkylation. So if some type of agent that is able to undergo an SN2 reaction approaches one of these nitrogenous bases, an SN2 reaction can take place. So let's suppose we have the following substrate. On this substrate, we have the following leaving group, which is a very good leaving group. It's stabilized by resonance, and we have the following R group. So our R group in this case is our CH3, our methyl molecule. So notice that this is a nitrogenous base. It contains a lot of N atoms, which have a pair of electrons each. And that means they can act as nucleophiles by definition. So if this approaches our base, one of these N atoms can act as a nucleophile attacking this carbon atom, displacing this leaving group. And this is known as alkylation because our N atom gets alkylated, in this case methylated. A methyl group is attached to our N atom. Now, nothing really happens if this N atom gets alkylated, but if one of these N atoms gets alkylated, what will happen is one of the bonds will be destabilized. One of these bonds will be broken. And so if one of these N atoms, our nucleophiles, gets alkylated, our molecule will destabilize. And if a bunch of these happens on all the bases, their entire molecule can separate. This will greatly disrupt our DNA structure. And so this is a bad thing. Now, once again, the DNA double helix is held together by hydrogen bonds between our nitrogenous bases, so between this and this base. Disruption of these bonds will lead to destabilization of the double helix. This can in turn lead to detrimental effects because our biomolecular reactions depend on a perfect DNA structure. Now, mutagenic molecules or cancerous molecules found in the air and uh, 
things that we ingest can interact with the nucleophilic nitrogens via an SN2 reaction. And this leads to destabilization and can lead to detrimental effect like proliferation of our cells which can uh, eventually lead to cancer. Greatly disrupt our DNA structure and so this is a bad thing. Now once again the DNA double helix is held together by hydrogen bonds between our nitrogenous bases. So between this and this base. Disruption of these bonds will lead to destabilization of the double helix. This can in turn lead to detrimental effects because our biomolecular reactions depend on a perfect DNA structure. Now mutagenic molecules or cancerous molecules found in the air and uh, things that we ingest can interact with the nucleophilic nitrogens via an SN2 reaction and this leads to destabilization and can lead to detrimental effect like proliferation of our cells which can uh, eventually lead to cancer.